Ji, namaste to everyone. Welcome. So, in the exercise one, observing the self by the self. Yesterday, we completed step five and came up to step six. Just to recap again, step one, the step that we need to keep doing continuously throughout. We started with it, but we need to keep it going throughout. That is observing the imagination, particularly the feeling in the imagination. Step two, we asked if this feeling that I'm having at any moment, is it naturally acceptable to me or not? Do I want its continuity or not? Step three, we asked about the impact of the feeling. Am I comfortable with that feeling or am I uncomfortable with that feeling that I have at any moment? In step four, we were asking about who the decision maker is, who is deciding this feeling. Is it a person outside? Is it the situation outside or is it me? And we were able to see that it is certainly I who is deciding the feeling, although I may not be aware of it many times. So these four steps will seem to happen in very rapid succession, almost as if it's all one. And you can club it together if you wish. With these four steps, we were able to see that I am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness. Not anybody else outside, not the situation outside, but me, myself. In step five, we looked at the basis for my deciding the feeling. Because I need to be conscious of how I'm deciding my feeling because that is deciding my happiness and unhappiness. And I do want to be happy in continuity all the time. So we found that we make decisions about the feeling based either on right understanding or on an assumption, any kind of assumption, anything that we have accepted about things, about people, about the reality which may or may not actually be in line with the reality. And we find that whenever we are, you know, if we are basing, like how would we know whether we are uh, deciding the feeling based on right understanding or on assumption. So as of now, we can see that we may not have the completeness of right understanding. We may have understood a few things, but the real test is to see it in our living. If I am able to have a feeling that is naturally acceptable, indefiniteness, all the time, then I am probably making it on the basis of right understanding. But if I have indefiniteness of feeling at any moment, if I am sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy, if I am sometimes deciding on a feeling that is naturally acceptable, sometimes on a feeling that is not naturally acceptable, then it just indicates that I have work to do. I am still working with many assumptions and perhaps when things are conducive to my liking, I'm calm, I'm comfortable. And when things outside are not to my liking, I get disturbed because my feeling inside is not ensured. That is why I'm getting influenced by the outside situation, the outside environment, the people that I interact with and my feeling keeps fluctuating. 
So with step five, we were able to see that we do need to have this right understanding. It is my need. I require to have this right understanding in order to be able to ensure my feeling, to have a definite feeling that is naturally acceptable so that I can be happy at all times, every moment. Now in step six, yesterday, we started with this discussion of seeing what these feelings are that are natural for me, that I want in continuity. So we asked some questions. We asked to check which feeling is naturally acceptable to us. The feeling of relationship or the feeling of opposition. What feeling is naturally acceptable to us? The feeling of harmony or the feeling of disharmony? What is naturally acceptable to us? Feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle? And we had decided that we would ask this question all day yesterday and try to see if those feelings that are naturally acceptable to us, are they also the feelings that we are having most of the time during the day in all our interactions with others? Or are we having from time to time a feeling that is not in line with this? So instead of relationship, are we having a feeling of opposition at times? Instead of the feeling of harmony, are we having the feeling of disharmony? So that we are not accepting things outside because whenever there is some situation that is not what we think it should be, if we are getting disturbed, then we have a feeling of disharmony within. Any disturbance within us, we can see is disharmony within us, isn't it? And whenever we feel we have to struggle, we have to fight, we have to make our way through with a lot of effort and it is not flowing naturally, we can see that instead of the feeling of coexistence, we are having the feeling of struggle. And that is not naturally acceptable to us. Therefore, we are disturbed, we are unhappy. We were asking this question, which feeling is naturally acceptable to us? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Feeling of harmony or disharmony? Feeling of coexistence or feeling of struggle? And we will find that the feelings that are natural for us, the feelings that we want in continuity, are the feeling of relationship, the feeling of harmony, and the feeling of coexistence. Right now, we may not have the ability, we may not have the competence to have these feelings in continuity. Therefore, we try to make some, we manage somehow by avoiding situations, avoiding people wherever we think or we are fearful that it will cause pain for us or disharmony for us or disturbance or unhappiness. But in truth, if we see, those feelings are very much within us. And those are the ones that are disturbing us. So ultimately, if I can see that the feeling that is natural for me, the feelings that I want to be having all the time, you will find those are the feelings of relationship, the feelings of harmony and feeling of coexistence. So what that means is that I need to ensure the right understanding within myself. That means I need to have the right understanding of 
the relationship an understanding of the harmony an understanding of the coexistence to be able to see the coexistence for myself so how do i start how do i begin i need to look at my feeling i need to see what is naturally acceptable to me and try to take guidance from there and keep my feeling in line with the natural acceptance so as my feelings become more and more in line with the natural acceptance i will notice that i am in harmony more and more and more times and as the harmony within me increases that is as the conflict and the disturbance and the contradiction in the thoughts decreases and the harmony within me increases slowly i will be able to uncover these higher activities within myself they are already there i just need to become aware of them become conscious of them so i need to contemplate on relationship on my participation in the relationship my role in the larger picture i need to understand the harmony that there is a certain harmony in every unit every single unit is self organized working in a very definite manner i need to be able to understand that i need to realize the coexistence i need to be able to see this coexistence for myself not just as words not just as information but to really experience it within me so this is the whole process that we are trying to do and like we mentioned ultimately slowly we will start uncovering these higher activities within us and as we do when the activity of contemplation when we awaken to the activity of contemplation we will see this relationship with all and we will also see our participation in the relationship in the larger order as we keep working on ourselves we will also be able to uncover the feeling of or the activity of understanding with that we will be able to see the self organization that is there in every unit in nature whether i look at myself i have this self organization within me already that whenever i have a feeling of opposition i am disturbed now this is part of my organization i didn't do anything for that it is already there this is how i am organized that whenever i have a feeling that is not in line with my natural acceptance i get disturbed i don't have any way of changing that i try to suppress it i may not be aware of it but it is there the moment i start becoming aware i can see it very clearly similarly there is you know if i look at the body so many cells so many organs so many things happening in the body things are happening in a very definite organized manner unless i am disturbing them but if left to itself the body is working in a very organized manner in a very definite manner like that if we look at every unit in nature we will find that things are working in a very definite manner there is a certain harmony in nature and then when i uncover the activity of realization i will be able to see the basis for all of this how things are in order what is the basis 
it is because at the base we are all embedded in space that is how we are related that is how we are self organized that is how we are you know how every unit is recognizing the relationship and fulfilling the relationship it is just that i have to understand this i have to see it for myself then the picture fits then the then the whole picture becomes clear so really speaking to be able to have that definiteness i will have to work my way all the way up to the activity of realization nothing less than that will do because until i am directly able to observe the space i may not be able to see this for myself i may not be able to experience this because until and unless i awaken to the activity of realization i will not have the ability to see space for myself so we can't really stop anywhere in between we'll find that we have to go all the way if we really want to be in happiness in continuity uh, a state activity does it mean that at a particular point of time what we do and the dynamic activity uh, which continuously goes on uh, how to understand a state and dynamic yeah. coming to the state and the dynamic we'll take the example from this lower chart right in the state activity we have tasting in the dynamic activity we have selecting right now if you see supposing we take any taste say we say the taste of food on the tongue you have some uh say you taste some sweet for the first time hmm? you have you experience that taste no and you will find you like that taste or something else you taste and you dislike the taste that taste as long as you are eating it experience that taste when it is finished the taste on the tongue is no longer there but still you if you recall this you know that the, you know this thing tastes nice isn't it next time you are passing that shop you recall this taste and now you want to have that taste you are selecting that on the basis of the taste that was there already within you hmm so you will find that we are constantly doing this we have some taste within us on the basis of which we select and we tend to select things for which the taste is likable to us we tend to avoid the things where the taste is something that we dislike so moment to moment we are choosing something we are selecting something but in the on the basis of that state activity within similarly comparing and analyzing so you you have many things that you many thoughts within you isn't it and several things we may be comparing things on the basis of something we compare isn't it and then we analyze okay this for such and such thing i um, say you have to buy something hmm? i'm just taking some examples outside so that you understand it so um supposing you have to buy something and you have some basis of comparing the two things whatever one thing is 
heavier, one thing is lighter, one thing is more expensive, one thing is less expensive, and so on. On the basis of that, you are analyzing something and deciding, selecting something. You come down to the selecting part. So this whole process is happening very quickly and it all will seem like one thing. But actually, these are different activities. If you go back to the desire, what you actually want, so you will notice that, or you may be able to see at some point that every desire we have is associated with a feeling. And actually, if you go down to the root, that desire is to be happy. But because we are not able to see that, many a times we link our desire with the outside. So it's really an expectation, you can say. For instance, I may think that I may have this desire for a car because somewhere I think that I will be happy. But really getting a car is just something that I'm trying to do with the outside world. But at the base, my desire was to be happy, isn't it? Now, when this state activity, the contemplation awakens, or I awaken to that activity of contemplation, I will be able to see that my desire for happiness you know, at the root that what I want to, I want to be happy. I will see that my happiness lies in the happiness of the other. Because I can see the relationship. I will start seeing this relationship. And rather than expecting, as long as this activity was not there, you know, the contemplation I had not awakened to, expectation was from others that they should treat me a certain way, they should have such and such feeling for me. But once I awaken to this activity of contemplation, now when I am able to see the relationship, that is already there within me now. On the basis of that, I image, I image what? Now I will start imaging my participation, my role. Rather than expecting from them, I will be able to see this difference in comp competence. I'll be able to see the intention separately from the competence. And I will be able to see my role, how I can be complementary to the other, and so on. Are you able to see that? When we say observe mm -hmm. for 10 minutes or whole day, mm -hmm. so what I feel is it is what we are forcing to observe or forcing to look and I hope somewhere we are missing the natural acceptance or natural feelings, what I think. Is it so, yeah. Didi? Or... Yeah. So if, uh, you know, the observation is actually from the point of the natural acceptance, which is, you know, the highest activity within what we, the realization part, from there, in glimpses, although we haven't awakened to that activity, but the glimpse we get is from there, right? That is why it is universal. That is why it is the same for all. So if we refer to the natural acceptance, we get that answer. But what happens is, because the feeling is uh, something subtle within, we may be thinking about the feeling, we may be thinking about the natural acceptance, 
can you see this lower chart so if you look at the b2 block you can see you know these activities are there desire thought expectation and if we notice a lot of times we may not be able to still observe the feeling because the feeling is more subtle than the thought and in fact we may be thinking about the thought but we are we may not be observing it so if that is happening then we'll be thinking about it okay now i am doing this now i am doing that but that's how it starts that you start observing the outside better you start observing the body so you will notice to begin with the activities outside so you will notice that you know when we ask to observe to begin with you might observe that okay now i am sitting now i am eating now i am walking i am putting one foot in front of the next and so on slowly as we go you know keep doing that activity or we keep trying to observe if we pay attention inside slowly we will start observing the thoughts we will be able to see the thoughts that are going on right now we may be recalling some thoughts from memory but we'll be able to notice these thoughts are going on while we are doing activities we may notice that my thoughts are somewhere else isn't it while i am doing some activity my thoughts i may be at work but my thoughts may be of the home and i will be able to see that as we keep doing that observation then we'll also be able to see the feeling that with every thought there is some feeling associated that we have to catch so it will take time sometimes it may take more time uh, but we have to keep doing this exercise till we are able to see that feeling and then further in this process